Hey everybody, Canadian Operator here, and today is going to be a very different style of video. With me I have the GNG GPM92 GP2. It's definitely a very long name, but in short, it's a Beretta 92FS clone, and honestly, it is a very interesting looking firearm. If you're wondering what I just did there, stay tuned because that's exactly what this video is going to be about. Before we get to that though, I want to give you my intentions and aspirations for this and future videos in this playlist. There are two of them. The first is that I want to help to share with you my experience of becoming a firearms owner in Canada, talking about the politics, the laws, the regulations, and of course the processes of becoming a firearms owner, and that includes knowing what to learn and what to expect going into your courses, licensing, and all of that. Now, the second is that I want to help to educate the general public, the purpose for which this entire channel was founded, because I find that if you're getting your information from places like CBC or Marco Mendicino and his pals, you're not being told the whole truth. And there's a lot of fear mongering and scare tactics that are being used to scare everyday Canadians into thinking that even this is a horrible weapon of war. And Nothing could be further from the truth. So please join me on this journey as we talk about the aspects of firearm safety that are important to Canadians and to Canadian gun owners. And hopefully, whether you decide to like firearms or not at the end of all of this, at least you'll have a better understanding and be able to make your own decision as opposed to having a politician make it for you. All right, everybody, so let's go ahead and prove this firearm safe. We say prove in Canada because it's an acronym to help us remember the steps to clear a firearm and also because it's going to be laser etched in your mind as soon as you go through your Canadian firearm safety course or your Canadian restricted firearm safety course. I did do all of those steps in the beginning of the video if you uh, were paying attention there, uh, but we're going to do it again for you here. Now, just so you know, this is an airsoft pistol. As you can probably see there, it is very well modeled after the Beretta 92FS, including even the decocker, which is actually just like really, really impressive. Um, but uh, that's why we're gonna be using this uh, also for safety. It's just good not to be using a real firearm if we don't have to. Although these steps will work exactly the same if you happen to own one or are looking to get one in the future, which hopefully if Bill C21 bites the dust, you'll be able to. And so will I, because I don't actually have a real pistol with me. Right, so let's go ahead and put this in here and set it up in a way that it looks like it would be loaded. Now, of course, we know that it's not. I'm gonna decock it as well, and uh, that is how we're gonna leave it. So we're gonna just picture that we picked this up just off the table, and what do we do with it? So we're gonna use the prove method, and prove is an acronym, as I may have mentioned, which means point, remove, observe, verify, and examine. And if that seems like a lot, I know that it might, but we're gonna get through this together and before you know it, it's gonna be as easy as. Literally, that's it, okay? Very, very simple, so there's nothing to be worried about. Let's go ahead and put this back in and let's jump through all of that together. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is point. So I'm gonna be pointing off to my left, your right, which is my safe direction. When you're in class, uh, you might be asked to point the firearm in a given direction as well. And that's important because of course, we wanna make sure that you know how you're handling your firearm and that you are observant of where your muzzle is being pointed. That's gonna be part of ACTS, which is assume every firearm is loaded, control the muzzle, keep your finger off the trigger and out of the trigger guard, and see that the firearm is unloaded, prove it's safe. But we'll talk about that in a different video. I know, it seems like a lot. I'm laying a lot of info on you here today, but it's good info, okay? So we're gonna point the firearm in a safe direction, which is gonna be over to my left. If you're following along at home, that can be anywhere that the uh, that, that is a safe direction for you, okay? So you don't necessarily have to point your firearm that way if you're following at home. Just point it to the safest available direction away from pets, children, people, whatever, okay? The next thing is that we're gonna to have to remove the cartridges from here because of course we don't want an accidental discharge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the magazine first. Now the really nice thing about uh, modern pistols is that their mag release is almost always pretty much in the same place. Mine is just gonna be right here and if we push that, you can see that that releases the magazine and then we can just take that magazine right out. And now we don't have a magazine in there at all, okay? But we're not really out of the woods yet because we're not really sure if there's still a cartridge in the chamber, which is basically the ready position for a cartridge to be in order to be fired. There's only one of two places that that uh, cartridge is going to be. It's either gonna be in the magazine, which as you can see is not the case, and it's, it's either gonna be in there 
or it's gonna be in the chamber if it's in the gun at all, okay? So what we need to do is we need to open up that chamber and we need to observe it to make sure that there's no cartridge there. The way that we do that on a modern pistol is that there is going to be a little lever here. You can probably hear that. And what you wanna do is you wanna push on that lever in the direction of wherever your slide is. So that's always gonna be this way or up if you're just holding it with your right hand and you happen to be right-handed. So you're pushing that lever up and at the same time, you're gonna be pulling the slide back. And then you pull that lever up and then that's it. That lever is now, as you can see there, holding that slide from coming back forward. And consequently, that's gonna allow us to have a look and observe the chamber and make sure that there is nothing in the chamber at all here. And as you can see there, there is not, okay? so. One of the other benefits of doing this, even if you don't use that lever, is that by simply racking the slide, right, the ejector will eject anything that's in the chamber already. So if you happen to have something in the chamber, uh, whether it was a misfire or whether it was just a completely unfired cartridge and you just forgot that it was in there, depending on your laws, depending on where you are, I know some people in the United States, they can do an open carry, they can do a concealed carry, you know, they can have a loaded gun on them, um, you know, at any point in time. And so, you know, if you're looking to uh, basically settle down back at home and you want to make sure that your firearm is unloaded for storage or what have you, doing this, right, it's always going to show you um, that the firearm is clear because just the simple act of moving that slide back, okay, is going to eject anything that you might have in that chamber. All right, the next thing we need to do is verify the feeding path. The feeding path meaning basically the ammunition going from the magazine, right, which is in the mag well, which is in here, going up through and to the point where it's able to be chambered by the slide moving forward like that, okay? So we need to check that the feeding path is clear that there's nothing there. So if we look through, as you can see there, we can see each other and the same this way. There we go, okay, so it's a little dark, but you might be able to notice that there's nothing in the feeding path as well. And the very last thing that we need to do is examine the bore, and that is basically just making sure that we're looking through uh, and figuring out one way or another to ensure that there's no obstructions in the bore. This is very important because if you happen to have something in your bore, like the remnants of a bullet or something, or like a full bullet that just got lodged in there and it's still there, if you fire, right, you're going to be in a world of hurt because your gun could possibly explode, causing injury, death, all sorts of different things. So you always wanna make sure that your, your bore is clear. The best way to do that, of course, is to use a cleaning rod. You can put a cleaning rod through this and as long as that cleaning rod comes out the other side, um, that works. You can shine a light down the bore as well, which I do in small bore uh, rifles and stuff like that. And that usually works, um, but to be honest, uh, getting into the habit of just using a cleaning rod does help because that cleaning rod is often going to be the exact diameter that it needs to be to fill up all the space in that bore. And by moving it all the way through and having it come out the other side, that basically tells you, hey, there is absolutely nothing in your bore and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, that happens a lot more often than not, not just with clearing firearms, but also sometimes at the range, you get a misfire or you get something happen, your gun starts behaving kind of weird and you don't want to just stick another magazine in there and just go to town because you could potentially hurt yourself or somebody else next to you. So this is not just for firearm safety in the sense of, well, let's just make sure that this firearm is clear, you know, before I put it away, but also like, how can I make sure that I treat my firearm in a way that is going to promote safety for myself and for the people around me, which is really important, especially if you're at home, if you're at the range, you're around other people, that's gonna be very important, okay? So let's run through that one more time very quickly. And because I've already, I think, spent a little bit too much time overcomplicating things. So we have a loaded firearm, technically. We know it's not loaded, but we need to prove that it's not loaded, right? So we're gonna point, remove, observe, verify, and examine. That firearm is now safe. And if I were to walk away from that at a range and I come back, 
I need to do exactly the same thing, even though it's already open. We'll get to range etiquette in another video. Anyway, I hope you found that very helpful. And if you'd like to share this with someone who is looking to get their license, I would very much appreciate it because I will have many more like this coming in the future. Thank you so very much for watching and subscribing and for all of your kind words so far. I really appreciate all of your support and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.